Following some breaking news in our politics lead, the Justice Department late today charging a Russian woman with trying to interfere in the 2018 midterm elections, which are just 18 days away. CNN political correspondent Sarah Murray joins me now. Sarah, wh what is this Russian woman alleged to have done? Well, Jake, she's basically uh, being charged because she was part of this scheme, allegedly, to try to sow discord, to try to manipulate voters. And, you know, we've heard plenty about election meddling in 2016, but the Justice Department said this was continuing in the run-up to the midterms. The Justice Department charging a Russian woman Friday with conspiracy for trying to manipulate voters in the 2018 midterms as it cracks down on election meddling beyond special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. Elena Kushyainova of St. Petersburg, Russia, allegedly managed the financing for a social media troll agency, which sent out these ads and memes that fanned division between racial minority groups, political radicals, and disaffected voters. This is former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was back in a Virginia court for the first time since his conviction in a wheelchair, a shock that quieted the courtroom as a judge set Manafort's sentencing date for February 8th. Manafort, clad in his green inmate uniform, sat with his foot raised off the ground in a sock. His lawyer said Manafort is facing significant health issues related to the terms of his confinement. Manafort's attorneys pushed for him to be sentenced quickly. A person familiar with Manafort's condition said he is experiencing inflammation related to his diet. Manafort is awaiting sentencing on eight charges of tax fraud and banking crimes. Judge T.S. Ellis said today 10 additional charges that the jury could not agree on will be dropped. As he prepares for sentencing, Manafort continues to cooperate with Mueller's team, meeting with them at least nine times in the past four weeks. Meantime, the man overseeing the Russia probe, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, is set to speak to congressional leaders next week about reports that he discussed wearing a wire to secretly record President Trump and efforts to remove Trump from office. The session is slated to take place behind closed doors with Republican and Democratic leaders of the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees, cutting out some of the rank and file members that have been most critical of Rosenstein. Instead of having him here under oath, they're going to have some little game of patty cake with the committee chairman and the ranking members. This is no way to conduct oversight. Now, Rosenstein may be under pressure, but we are told he is not pa passing that pressure on to Robert Mueller. A source at the Justice Department says that there is no pressure on Mueller to wrap up his probe the day after the midterm elections. So this will continue, at least for a while, Jake. All right, let's bring in uh, CNN's Laura Jarrett and Kara Scannell into the conversation. Laura, let me ask you, how significant was this Russian interference campaign? This is pretty remarkable. This is the first criminal case that we have seen having to do with political interference in advance of the 2018 midterms. We've talked about 2016 a lot, but they are still doing this. And the Justice Department revealed today just the kind of extent to which people tried to sow discord, everything from immigration to the NFL kneeling debate. I mean, you can see the ads in Sarah's piece, one of which talks about every deported illegal household saves taxpayers $700,000. This is why it's very important to keep families together as they are all being deported. You can just see trying to touch on hot button issues of the day to sow discord. Now, it's interesting, this person is obviously a Russian national. She is not going to be charged. Well, she's not going to be appearing here, even though she's been charged here in federal court. So it's part of this sort of charging and shaming that we've seen before from the special counsel's office. And Sarah, President Trump was just asked about this. Take a listen. Nothing to do with my campaign. You know, all of the hackers and all of the, everybody that you see, nothing to do with my campaign. If they're hackers, a lot of them probably like Hillary Clinton better than me. I mean, one would think a president would be like, this is going to stop. This is why my Justice Department is on the case. I, won't, I want to protect the integrity of the vote. No, it's all about it. I, I, I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, and this is why there's been this, you know, concern. We've seen it essentially since Trump took office about how seriously he takes the question of election meddling, whether he, you know, is really invested in efforts to try to stop it. And he sort of just sees it as, you know, this is not what helped me get elected. This is not what helped my campaign rather than, okay, I'm the president of the United States now and it's my job to ensure that democracy remains intact. Well, there was one time, Karis Canal, uh, when President Trump did talk about, in a high-profile way, election interference uh, at the U.N., uh, but it wasn't about Russia. Take a listen. Regrettably, we found that China has been attempting to interfere in our upcoming 2018 election. They do not want me or us to win because I am the first president ever to challenge China on trade. 
Now, it's worth uh, pointing out that the Trump administration has not presented any evidence the Chinese have been trying to interfere in the elections. That's not to say that they aren't. But it is interesting that he talked about that and yet wouldn't call out Russia at that same forum. That's right. And even today, his own intelligence community issued a warning that there's still interference and named Russia in that. But the president hasn't embraced that. And he, he didn't even acknowledge this indictment today when asked about it as, as something that is actively happening. Where they're, you know, this, they're saying they had $10 million budget that they were spending this year, the first six months of this year, mm -hmm. and part of that on the U.S. election. Uh, and Sarah, National Security Advisor Ambassador John Bolton is heading to Moscow uh, this weekend uh, to meet with Russian officials. One assumes he'll bring this up. <laughs> One does assume. <laughs> but who can ever say, Jake? I mean, we get such little information uh, when we've seen members of this administration meet with the Russian president about what is discussed. And, you know, when Trump himself has met with Putin, he comes across saying, you know, he says he's not involved in this. He says he's not involved in meddling. And so it'll be interesting to see if we get a, a different tactic when it comes to Bolton. But, you know, I'm not holding my hopes out that suddenly the posture of this administration is going to change overnight just because we've now seen, you know, this latest uh, indictment. And Kara, uh, let's talk about Paul Manafort for a second, President Trump's former campaign chairman. He was in court today. Uh, he'll be sentenced in February. Does this mean that his cooperation is complete? No, not at all. In fact, the judge asked the prosecutors today if they could put a timeline or date certain on when Paul Manafort's cooperation would be complete. And they said, no, they couldn't. And the judge said, that's fine. I'm not willing to wait. So that's why he set the sentencing date for February, which is still five months you know, since Manafort was convicted. Uh, so there is a quite amount of time here that the prosecutors can continue to meet with him. And as we've been reporting, you know, they've been in, Manafort's been in nine times in the past four weeks. And, you know, you can imagine that will continue. Uh, Laura, I want to ask you about Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein appearing uh, for a closed door interview with chairman and ranking members of the House Oversight Committee and the House Judiciary Committee next week. Um, not participating. That's going to include the people that are going to be there include uh, Goodlatte and Gowdy and Nadler and Cummings, but not participating are the people that have really been calling for this, Congressman Meadows and, and J Jim Jordan. Um, here's how Meadows responded to the news. He's not coming under a subpoena. And quite frankly, he thinks that the protection of a classified room is going to protect him from transparency, and it will not. Is this a win for Rosenstein? It's a huge win for Rosenstein. This is one of his biggest critics, someone who has called for his impeachment, along with other allies of the president on Capitol Hill. Now, obviously, he will still face a transcript. He will face a court reporter. He will be under oath. This is not a pleasant exercise. He's being forced to explain whether he did or did not say he wanted to wiretap the president. All right. Thanks, one and all, for being here.